Welcome to part one of the Moto Guzzi V65 engine investigation. And I should just begin with um, an apology and explanation. Um, those of you who have followed the series of videos will notice there's a part one, part two to part six are posted, but there is, somebody's already asked, <laughs> where's part one? Uh, a good question. Um, I started putting the videos, posting the videos up kind of in reverse order, going from part six and got back, realized that I, I was missing whatever would make up a part one. So a part one really um, is, I suppose, a background to the project because part two begins with the cylinder head coming off. And the, the, I didn't have the footage to explain what this job was all about. So I'm going to do it in a way. Um, and this is now nearly 12 months after um, that job was done. But um, you've noticed here probably straight away there is another uh, V65 cylinder head here and some other V65 parts. So I'll give you a little bit of an explanation into the background to the job and then a little bit more about why these parts are here. The bike itself isn't here in my garage, there are various other motorcycles. Uh, the V65 um, I lent to a friend um, to use over the, the summer and um, he still has the bike in his garage at the moment because we uh, we had another problem with the V65 with the, the other side, uh, which I'll come on to in a moment. But anyway, the reason uh, I was doing that engine investigation in that series of videos was uh, I was riding the, the bike the, um, along. Um, I'd been out for a ride, enjoying myself, and I was riding at about, I think, 40 to 50 miles per hour when suddenly there was a, a bit of a bang from the uh, engine and uh, the engine lost power and sounded very lame. I recognized straight away that one cylinder had stopped working. Uh, I managed to continue and get home. Uh, the bike kept running on uh, one cylinder for about two to three miles, got it home, um, stopped it, you know, let it cool down, everything, attempted a restart and it was just the same. It's running on one cylinder only, the left-hand cylinder. So I realised that something was quite major um, and that led to that engine investigation which subsequently turned out to be a dropped exhaust valve which is something that the um, these bikes are, are well known for. Um, okay, um, so really that was the background to that story. So uh, hopefully that explains that is the missing part one. There was nothing really to see or do with the part one. I didn't record the sound the engine was making when it was running on one cylinder, but you, you kind of know what a twin sounds like when a twin is running on one cylinder. It just sounds like a single cylinder engine, but you're also getting uh, a bit of a knock, a bit of a rattle as well, because there were obviously the broken off valve had embedded itself into the um, the combustion chamber, the cylinder head, and was banging. Um, but as we see subsequently, there wasn't a great deal of damage there. Really, I got away with that one. It could have been a lot worse. Um, uh, I took the head away to a specialist who put um, two new valves in, not just the broken exhaust valve, put a second new valve in, which is probably a good idea because the, the same thing can happen on the inlet side. Anyway... That's the story with the original engine investigation, but um, by way of sort of wrapping this part up, we'll just carry on to another story. This is the left-hand cylinder head, so this is the one that wasn't the fe featured in the other story. It's a different story. As you can see, there's a bit of carbon build-up in here, but otherwise this is a, you know, 37,000 mile engine. We've still got the original valve still in place, so you know I'm taking a bit of a risk continuing to run the engine with the original valves for now. The problem we had on this side was the um, exhaust manifold flanges. Uh, these, that's the exhaust uh, manifold. There's two very skinny, uh, I think they're just six millimeter bolts, which uh, hold on this finned collar, which holds the uh, exhaust header pipe in place. Well. One of these, that one there, sheared off. Um, it, it just sheared a split, which meant that the exhaust collar came loose and there was a, a lot of noise and exhaust gas leakage from this side. And so um, to, I decided in the end I had to re-tap. Uh, so I took the cylinder head off the bike. I didn't really want to do that in situ. There wasn't really enough space to do that. And what I've done is I've... Um, oops, excuse me. I've retapped this um, this thread out, and rather than using a stud 
and uh, a nut, which is the standard way. I'm actually now just using a bolt. Um, I put in a coil insert. I, so I drilled this out, put, uh, the, the remains of the old stud. Um, I put a coil insert into the hole I drilled out. And that now takes a six millimeter bolt, uh, hex headed bolt now. So rather than a nut, you know, you just use this, this bolt. So this is now waiting to go back onto the bike. But um, you're probably aware um, that well, obviously the world is in the midst of a, a COVID-19 pandemic and the, the UK and the northwest of England, where I live in Manchester, has been very badly hit by COVID-19 and currently we're under um, serious restrictions and I'm not able to go to my friend's house currently um, and put the, the bike back together. As soon as I can do that, I will do that. I've got the gasket set ready here to put that all back together. And also, at the same time, I'm going to take advantage of this cylinder head being off to do something else I've been wanting to do on the bike for a while, which is refit the stock air cleaner assembly. This large box, it looks like some gigantic um, insect slug, doesn't it, or something. This huge air box here. Um, the bike, when I bought it originally, didn't have this air box. It had uh, just filter pods, which it still got on, filter pods. They make a nice induction noise, but I generally like to have my, uh, my bikes running stock. And so it's a really awkward thing to fit this. You can't really fit it with the engine in situ. Um, but with the one cylinder head off, I think there may just be enough room for me to slide this in between the V of the cylinders and connect it up so I can have the stock air box. And then I can you know, set the carburetor up correctly um, with knowing that the, correct, you know, the factory settings will, are applicable for this. So that's it really it really that's the uh, the story just while we're in the garage just show you a couple of uh, some of my other bikes um, over there I've got a Royal Enfield uh, Bullet Classic uh, that's a 2015 model um, that is bike is actually currently for sale um, it's a very nice bike but um, although it looks old it's really a modern bike and um, I, I really prefer the the older bikes so that one is currently for sale um, I've got a BMW K100 RS. This is an early bike. It's 1984 RS. Um, it's uh, entirely stock. It's really nice. I've only had it uh, about three or four months now, done a couple of thousand miles on it. It's a big heavy old thing, but uh, I like its 1980s style. I like the story about how it was um, a, a, a landmark for BMW going away from the boxer engines to this uh, flat uh, on its side. Waterkill 4. Um, I'll do a big a special video about that perhaps in the spring when we've got some nice weather I'll do a, a more in detail video about the the K100 RS and this thing here which is I'm um, currently using as a bench for my parts uh, this is another German bike but this came from East Germany this is an MZ uh, and it's a ES175 stroke 2 or known as the Trophy uh, MZ proudly uh, had some trophy successes in the 1960s in the International Six Days Trial and um, they proudly put the uh, winning years. They also won in 1967 but that's missing from this one because this bike is a 1967 bike. So this bike would have been made before they won the 1967 trophy. Um, I've just recently fitted some leg shields to it um, and the exciting news is I've got under this uh, towel here, I've got a 250cc engine uh, for it, complete with 12 volt conversion, which will go straight into this frame um, because this bike was made in either 175 or 250cc uh, form. So the 250cc engine will go in this winter. And I think I'll have a, a really nice bike for next summer to uh, bike with a, a bit more go in it. So that's it. Quick introduction to the fleet. I've got a couple of other bikes elsewhere, um, stored elsewhere, which we'll, uh, we'll talk about some stage. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you've got a motor gutsy, um, Avanti!